and Malaysia Tzu Academy hosts three performances of the Water Repentance Sutra. We take a look at how care recipients in the Philippines reciprocate to this love and care. Welcome to Dara Headlines, I'm Helen Nell. Thank you for joining us. First up in Malaysia, to strengthen parent-child bonds, starting from June of this year, students at the Penang City Academy and their parents have gathered together to rehearse for the Wata Repentance Sutra. After nearly four months of practice, the group put on three performances that were seen by nearly 4,000 people. <laughs> This is the scene at the Penang City Academy in Malaysia, as more than 500 on-stage volunteers come together to perform the musical adaptation of the Water Repentance Sutra. Very good for me, and then so a lot of people can get a, a lot of lessons, so can get a lot of general knowledge also. And then so we also can uh, can see our round things and right things. This time, the on-stage volunteers are mostly students and teachers from the Tsuji Academy. This time not having much time to rehearse as a group, thanks to determination of the volunteers, the performances were a success. At first, I wasn't that concentrated on the performance and the movements. It took me more than two months to learn the sign language. When I decided to focus, however, it only took me about a week to remember all the lyrics and movements. Everyone makes mistakes and we all have desire, anger and ignorance in our hearts. If we can repent for our past mistakes, we can bring peace to those around us. The musical adaptation of the Water Repentance Sutra not only touched the hearts of those in the audience, but also the youngsters that were involved in the performances. When I was performing the sutra, I thought about the painter. The painter worked really hard to build his dream home. However, in the end, he had to go back to zero. I think this is the meaning behind the Water Repentance Sutra. Although my character in the musical adaptation only needed to sit and listen to helpful words from a lady, it wasn't easy to do. I had to put myself into my character because every part in the Water Repentance Sutra is important. Through the musical adaptation, on-stage volunteers and those in the audience are inspired to repent for their past behaviors and at the same time pray for a disaster-free world. In celebration of the 20th birthday of the Tsuji Hong Kong chapter, Tsuji volunteers put on three performances of the Water Repentance Sutra, which took place over two days. The solemn performance, which inspired many participants, was the result of six months of persistence and hard work by the volunteers. At the first performance, the chief of the Hong Kong Environmental Protection Department, Huang Jingxing, offered a tribute to Tsuji for their environmental efforts in the territory. The sounding of the bell and the drums resonates with the heart and awakens the soul. As the Tsuji Hong Kong chapter turns 20 this year, to celebrate the significant milestone, after six months of preparations and adopting a meatless diet, Tsuji volunteers curtain the musical adaptation of the Water Repentance Sutra at the Queen Elizabeth Stadium in Wandai District. The 2,000 seats in the stadium were fully packed with religious representatives, government officials, academics and local residents who arrived to celebrate this occasion with Tsuji. I, as the Hong Kong Environmental Protection Department Chief, would like to give a round of applause to the Tsuji Hong Kong chapter volunteers for their efforts in promoting recycling. We have seen their work in schools, in communities and recycling stations, and how they have inspired more people to practice recycling. This is a great beginning. The vivid portrayals of the on-stage volunteers and the solemn grace of the performers off-stage come together to convey the true meaning of the Water Repentance Sutra. I feel that this performance has crossed the confinements of a traditional sutra performance. 
The content is very insightful, and it is what modern-day people need. It has given us more strength to reflect within and find our inner peace and purity. It's unlike other organizations which preach what you should or shouldn't do. Instead, the performance has brought out a profound truth which is conveyed to participants through sign language. Through the unity and effort of each city volunteer, the first performance concluded on a successful note. Opening the second performance of the Water Repentance Sutra is Food and Health Bureau Chief Gao Yongwen, whose affinity with Tsuji began during the SARS epidemic. I hope we can encourage each other to practice the same love for Mother Earth as shown by the Tsuji volunteers and to practice respect and tolerance like the Tsuji volunteers and strive to do good deeds together. Amid the spiritual festivity, participants can feel the power of love and compassion. It was great. I hope I can contribute my strengths. I don't know how much I can contribute, but I want to do as much as I can to help others in need. In Indonesia, Dai TV Madan was established in 2007 and has produced countless good shows over the years. Recently, the TV channel was awarded the Indonesian Broadcasting Award given by the North Sumatra Indonesia Broadcasting Commission. Following the award, in the years to come, staff at the Dai TV Madan are vowed to continue bringing shows with positive messages to its viewers. It is the time to find out which media group is the winner of the Indonesia Broadcasting Award and the winner is Dai TV Madan. The programs produced by Dai TV are embedded with good moral values. Although other TV programs also have good moral messages, all of the judges thought that Dai TV Madan is very special. That's why we gave the award to Dai TV. Congratulations to Indonesia Dai TV, especially Dai TV Madan. In the future, we will continue producing good quality shows. Programs on Dai TV Madan, such as Salar Sarbudi and Bingkai Sumatra, only or exceeded the standards set by the Indonesian Broadcasting Award in the areas of educational values, moral messages, and a balanced percentage of local news coverage. We hope programs produced by Dai TV can purify people's hearts and light up the world. That's our goal. With the award in hand in the years to come, staff of Dai TV Madame promise to continue producing shows that will bring positive influences to its viewers. In Taiwan this past weekend, city volunteers held various new shoe scholarship award ceremonies throughout Taipei. In Guangdu, 323 students were awarded scholarships at a ceremony, at which athlete Ling Yijie was present to offer words of wisdom and encouragement. Amid thunderous applause, Taiwan marathoner Ling Yijie takes the stage at the city Guangdu grounds. When I was your age, I never received a scholarship. Lin, now known both in Taiwan and internationally, admits that when he was young, he didn't like to study, but instead used running as a way to find his path in life. Regardless of what you do, there are those who will agree and praise you, and others that will disagree and criticize. Being criticized is a chance to learn and reflect. If it is praised, then you can use it as encouragement on your path. Following Lin's talk, scholarship recipient Lin Manni gets on stage to share her own reflections. Manni lost both her father and mother when young and grew up an angry youth. However, under the volunteer's love, she has been able to find a heart of peace and self-confidence.
It is a big encouragement to be able to receive this scholarship today. It gives me even more determination to study hard and succeed. She is very hardworking and is willing to work hard to change herself. For example, when volunteering in the kitchen, she will find tasks to do and help out. With their scholarships in hand, these students are now more motivated than ever to succeed both in their studies and life. October, the city of Philippines chapter distributed bags of rice to impoverished residents in Manila. Upon receiving the rice, Jofina immediately shares it with her relatives, while Diostado and Renato, who both collect recyclables for a living, decided to cook this rice to help starving homeless children. A candle as his only source of light, this cramped space is where Diostado lives. Since his parents passed away, he has been making a living of collecting recyclables alongside the river. I make 50 Philippines peso a day, sometimes 75. This is how I get by. Living in the same hardship as Diostado is Ronaldo, yet each time he sees starving children wandering the streets, he will cook them a bowl of steaming rice, as he was the recipient of such kindness in the past. When I was little, I slept here on the side of the road. I saw some people collecting scraps and I joined them as well to get some food. There are over 2,000 impoverished families like Ronaldo in Manila, and this 20 kilogram bag of rice is what they have long been waiting for. This rice is important to us. We can eat it even without vegetables. Gestardo couldn't wait to open up his bag of rice upon returning home. Wow! Wow, this is rice. I've missed rice. I'm missing the rice. The first bucket of rice he scooped out, he shared with his neighbors, as he wants to return their kindness for helping him in the past. When I had nothing to eat, someone fed me. I'm also going to share some of my rice with them in return. Jofina, who lives alone under a bridge, called her relatives and shared her rice with them. I don't always want to rely on others. Sometimes we have to also give back. Knowing to be content with what they have and sharing with others in return, this bag of rice is packed with more love than that meets the eye. In Taiwan, medical staff from Taipei City Hospital and Northern District, Tima, recently held a free clinic in Jilong's Reifang District. Other than treating sickness, medical staff also present each senior with a pillbox to make sure they take their medication correctly in the future. Early in the morning, medical staff from the Taipei City Hospital gather at the Raving Community Center in Jilong for a free clinic. Through their interactions with local residents, doctors have realized that they all have a common problem. All of the seniors have the same problem, and that is, no one is available to look after them. They don't really know how to take their medication. So we have brought them these PO boxes. This will help them a lot, and they won't forget. The seniors living in Jianji are older and most of them suffer from limited mobility. Luckily, Tsuji provided them with transportation to the free clinic. This will help them greatly. The free clinic not only alleviates the suffering of patients, but also inspires those who volunteer at the event. We seldom see this kind of situation in Taipei. Patients like them are unable to go to the hospital on their own. Master Zhen Yin told us that when we see suffering, we must constantly recognize our own blessings. Thanks to a free clinic, medical staff will go home spiritually enriched and have promised to continue safeguarding the health of these residents in the years to come.
from landslides to typhoons, Nantou Xingyu Township has had its share. In the aftermath of such natural disasters, local residents are often left stranded due to blocked roads. This means that residents needing medical attention are also left without access to medical help. To address this problem, the local government here built a public health center that's more like a mini hospital to meet the needs of local residents. This is my wife. From our house, it takes us about 20 minutes to get to the public health center for dialysis. So we leave around 7.30 in the morning. There have been many typhoons that have hit this area, including Typhoon Herb in 1996. After the disasters, patients couldn't leave to receive dialysis treatment. Of course, we were also concerned for the health and safety of our residents, so the local government thought to establish a local dialysis center here. Thus, four dialysis machines were purchased and two nurses hired. We have approximately 42 dialysis patients in Xinyi Township. For some patients, it puts them at ease to speak their mother tongue, and it's also easier for them to express themselves. Besides the dialysis center, the public health center in Xinyi Township also has another department to heal the ailing. What's special about our health center is that we also have a rehabilitation clinic. For residents who rely on physical therapy to recover their mobility, the increase in visits means a faster recovery. I was involved in an accident and I went to physical therapy sessions elsewhere, but there is a rehabilitation center here, so it's much closer for me now. There's a large population of seniors here and they mostly suffer from problems related to their long days in the farm fields or old age. For Xingyi Township residents, the center is a mini hospital. Our public health center isn't like others, but instead offers a large variety of medical services. We even have an emergency department, which is open nearly 24 hours a day. When residents come here, it's almost like going to a regular hospital. Next, we learn the story behind the collection of meteorological data and meet a group of professionals working at weather station across Taiwan to see how they devote themselves to recording weather information on a daily basis. Observing weather conditions from a rooftop is one of the tasks of a weather observer. Around 10 minutes later, our collaborators around the world will get the meteorological data from here in Taiwan, including pressure, temperature, and cloud cover. Cloudy skies show a variety of information that only a professional can spot. At midnight or dawn, the observers have to repeat the routine no matter how cold it may be. We need to know the current meteorological data before generating weather forecast reports. As a weather observer, we are on the front line of observing potential weather conditions. Part of our job is to help alert members of the public to any natural disaster prior to its happening. This is not only a job, but a responsibility. In Taiwan, there are altogether 25 staffed weather stations. Every three hours, the stationed observers have to input observed meteorological data into a computer which will then transmit the information to the Central Weather Bureau. Other than the manual recording of weather information by observers, much of our meteorological data is automatically recorded by various meteorological apparatuses throughout the day. Countless staff members are involved in the maintenance of these apparatuses and the processing of weather information. 
In fact, a weather report is the result of the collective effort of many people. For grade two and grade three stations, weather observations must be made once every three hours. As for the smallest grade four stations, due to their limited manpower and resources, the two midnight observations are canceled. Working at the grade four station is different than working at larger stations. You have to live there for a month and work on your own to document weather data. Lin Jianquan, a weather observer with seven years of experience, spent three years of his career at the Yushan Weather Station. Over each monthly shift, he and two other technicians worked as a team to support each other through the severe working conditions and time away from their families. The weather observers sacrificed time with their families in order to distribute Taiwan's meteorological data to the world. I'm interested in observing the weather, so this is a perfect job for me. You have to figure out how to overcome the difficulty and do your best to adapt to it. Behind each meteorological report is the hard work of countless people. And for the ongoing work they do, these unsung heroes deserve the attention and respect of members of the public. Tiji volunteers in the United States continue to bring things to the Afrosums into hotels throughout the U.S. Recently, volunteers expanded the scope of their mission by planning to bring these words of wisdom into the prisons of Los Angeles County in California. Meanwhile, several members of the Los Angeles Police Force visited the Tiji U.S. headquarters to learn more about the Buddhist NGO. Tsuji volunteers introduce the missions and essence of the foundation to visiting Los Angeles police officers who in turn had much that was good to say about the organization. Joining partnership is going to be great because there's a lot of things that... The officers were also impressed by Tsuji's commitment to recycling and the protection of the environment. Site then or did they just do it up to the top of the board? Wow. And were further amazed by the fruits of the recycling work. Incredible! Ah, it's Rosie, incredible. This is great. Riverside County, Orange. Riverside County, Orange County, and LA City, they are all reviewing our case. Looking over city publications regarding the possibility of teens aphorisms entering the prison system, the officers had this to say. Volunteers with some consistency yes. that they come on a regular basis, mm -hmm. and I think that would be terrific. If we are able to enter the eight prisons of Los Angeles County, then in the future we can introduce this path of the Bodhisattva to even more people. We go to China at the end of the show to help those devastated by Typhoon Fito. City volunteers are currently holding the second round of aid distributions at the Far East Industrial Park in Zhejiang's Yuyao City. It is estimated that more than 5,000 households will receive City's help in the three-day event. We will leave you with these images. Thank you for watching the headlines. Goodbye.